things. Uh, let's get right to it. On Sunday mornings, we're going through 1 Corinthians chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Today, our text will be in chapter 12 and verses 14 through 17. I'll have you turn there at this time, and once you do, if you're able, I'll ask you to stand. You can follow along with me as I read. The Apostle Paul is writing, and by the Holy Spirit, verse 14 says, Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, verse 15, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And, verse 16, if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Let's pray, if you would join with me. Loving Heavenly Father, we need for you now, by the Holy Spirit, to settle our hearts and really quiet our minds and focus our attention upon you and that which you have for us this morning in our time together in your word. We don't want any distraction to keep us from that which you would desire to minister to us. So Lord, as we give you our undivided attention, will you speak very clearly into our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can be seated. Thank you. <coughs> Pardon me. Today's teaching will be part five of a series I've titled, What Everyone Should Know About the Holy Spirit. One of the reasons that I chose this title is that this particular topic has been the source of much confusion and even division when it comes to the Holy Spirit and particularly the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the interest of time today, I'm not going to uh, go back over what we've seen here too far. I want to get right to the text that's before us where we find the fifth thing that everyone should know about the Holy Spirit and it's that the spiritual gifts do not make us superior nor do they make us inferior. In verses 14 and 15, Paul says, the body is not made up of just one part, but many. And as such, the foot shouldn't say, well, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. And then he says in verse 16, so too, if the ear should say, well, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body either. Uh, it too would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And then in verse 17, he says, if the whole body were an eye, that would be freaky. Well, he doesn't say that. That's <laughs> Wouldn't that, though? I just want to make sure you're with me. I know it's early. <laughs> but if the whole body <laughs> were an eye, then where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, then where would the sense of smell be? The point being is that all of these are equally as important and dependent one upon the other. In order to better understand what Paul is saying to this Corinthian church, I think we have to know a little bit about what was taking place in that church. It seems that in their using of the gifts, they were also abusing the gifts, such that some who had certain gifts looked down on those who didn't have those gifts. And they were looked upon as being less important in the body of Christ. And this is what Paul 
wants to confront and address. It was causing many problems within the church body, not the least of which was that there were these attitudes that many of them had, and they were carnal attitudes, one towards the other. I would suggest that there were two very damaging and even destructive attitudes that existed in the Corinthian church. And I'll, I'll take it a step further and say that so too are these attitudes alive and well in the church today, unfortunately. One of these damaging attitudes was, and still is, sadly, that many were operating in the realm of their spiritual gifts out of an attitude of inferiority. And conversely, the second damaging attitude was that they were operating in the realm of their spiritual gifts with an air of superiority, looking down on those that they deemed to be less important, their role less significant within the body of Christ. Well, enter Paul's epistle to the Romans in chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. I'll read it real quick. You're certainly welcome to turn there. Paul says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, <laughs> but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. What's Paul saying here? Well, he's explaining how that just as each of us has one body with many members. These many members do not all function in the same way. In the arena of the spiritual, it works the same way as it does in the arena of the physical. And the key word here is function, in the sense that absent my understanding of how all the members of the body function, I will have the propensity to become dysfunctional. Boy, isn't that a word that we use a lot today? Well, I come from a dysfunctional family. Well, join the club. I think we all do, right? <laughs> uh, and actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to um, use synonymous in terms with the word dysfunctional, the word sin, God forbid. I came from a dysfunctional family. You know why you came from a dysfunctional family? Because you came from a family of sinners. So there. <laughs> I mean, it's like in marriage. I just marvel at how it is that in our innocent naivete, if I can say it that way, that we expect to have this great marriage together when you're bringing two horrible, stinking, rotten sinners together to say, I do. <laughs> Just trying to put it into perspective here. <laughs> Sin makes us dysfunctional. Can I say that? I just did. <laughs> That's what was happening. The carnality, the sin nature, creating this dysfunction within the body of Christ. And here's what happens. Not only do I become dysfunctional as a Christian individually, but I take that into the church corporately. And what happens is I become dysfunctional in the church body collectively. And that's what was happening 
there in the Corinthian church. When one functions as a member of the body of Christ, as they are supposed to, they will fulfill their purpose. And what happens in turn is that it fulfills them because of it. The most joyful and fulfilled Christians to me are the ones that are serving as a member in the body of Christ and functioning in that area of giftedness that God has given them. You see, when I realize that I have a unique function as a member of the body of Christ, it gives me a sense of purpose and significance, and there's a joy that comes packaged with it. And the reason is, is that I belong. We all have this innate need within us to belong. Just ask gang members why they're a part of a gang, because they belong. And this is the way that God has wired us. It gives us that sense of value and purpose that my life, my role has value as one of many. As a body of believers, we are one of many members that make up the body of Christ. And each and every one of us have a unique, important function within the body of Christ as a result. Sadly, though, many a Christian has resigned themselves to this notion that they're really unimportant. Their, their role is inconsequential, insignificant. And I think we do err greatly when we mitigate the magnificence of those who faithfully and tirelessly serve and minister in obscurity and anonymity. I'll tell you, what we do here on Sunday mornings in our worship services, what we do at our Bible studies on Thursday nights, were it not for those of you who so faithfully serve behind the scenes, so tirelessly, sometimes thanklessly, there's no way that I could get up here behind this pulpit as it is my privilege to do on Thursday nights and Sunday mornings and teach and preach the Word of God. It is an interdependence and that's the dynamic. We are all dependent one upon the other as the members of our body are all dependent one upon the other. My nose is dependent on my hand. That was a t terrible. This is why I have notes, by the way. <laughs> Never mind. Don't don't do that. What I just did. But anyway. But, but I I well. Let's put it this way. Let's try something else here. I won't won't be doing that second service certainly. But let's just say that you know I'm I'm pounding a nail, and I hit my thumb. What does my body do? One of the members now has been hurt. The whole body just oh. I bring it up and I. Kiss it and nurse it and comfort it and speak to it. It's okay. It's okay. And, and my, my thumb has been injured and hurt as one part of my body, but my whole body feels its pain. That's the way God made it. And just as it is in the physical, so too is it in the spiritual. We all have value in the body of Christ. We are all different members. And never think for a moment that your role, the part you play in the body of Christ, is inconsequential or unimportant. Nothing could be further from the truth. We need each other, right? Here's the bottom line. The Corinthians were thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to have. And I would suggest that on the other side of that, they were also thinking less of themselves than they ought to have. There were those who apparently, as Paul uses this metaphor, thinking to themselves, thinking of themselves, you know, um, I'm the big toe in the body of Christ. I mean, what possibly can the big toe contribute? I wish I was at least a hand, but I'm the foot. 
I, w I wish I was the mouth. Trust me, you don't want to be the mouth in the body of Christ. Well, but I feel like I'm the armpit in the body of Christ. Um, armpits have a purpose, too. I'm not going to get into that. I will get into... <laughs> I will get into the illustration using the human anatomy as it relates to the big toe. And I do so for a reason. Um, I don't like feet. I, I, I know I've shared this before. It's a problem. Uh, pray for me. Um, I don't think it's sin in my life, and I'm still saved. But I just have a problem. I don't like my own feet. And, and, I, and I thank God that, you know, especially on the mainland, you can cover those things up. But here in Hawaii, not so much. They're right there. And I look down at that toe, and I think to myself, that is an ugly toe. It's got stuff underneath the toenail, and it's significantly bigger than the rest of my foot. And I just don't, for the life of me, I can't imagine what possible function and purpose my big toe can have. Well, who knew? As it turns out, it is a very important part of the body, and my whole body needs that big toe. And my whole body needs all the other little toes with it. Um, I've noticed lately that since coming here and living here in Hawaii, my feet aren't smashed in shoes like they were on the mainland, so my, my pinky has started coming around a little bit. It's not, you know, my, my pinky toe, right? It's, is this getting weird? Well, I'm going somewhere with it. There is a, a point here, and I'll get to it. Just bear with me for a moment. But it, it's starting to kind of come out, and, and the, you know, before it was kind of crunched in and smashed in and curled underneath the other toes, and, and, and uh, it was really hard when it came time to, you know, give myself a pedicure. But, um, so, but now all of a sudden, I, I'm noticing that it's starting to, you know, kind of come alive. And I'm thinking, <laughs> if my big toe has a purpose, well, certainly my little toe does too. And as it turns out, it has a huge purpose and function as a part of my body. And that function is to give me balance. It provides me balance. And get this, the big toe, it provides me with strength. It's the big toe that gives me the strength to do things like jump and run and jog. And it also helps with the balance. I need every single one of those toes as ugly as they might be and as bad as they might smell. I need every single one of them. And how about this? Research has shown that as much of as 40% of our body weight is carried by the big toe. For me, that's a lot. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No wonder you look the way you do. 40%? Get this. If you didn't have your big toe, the other toes would have to carry that weight that the big toe carried. You know what's going to happen to them? They're going to become deformed. Because they have to spread out for the balance, and they have to carry all of that weight that once the big toe carried. All right, so that's the point. Let's close in prayer. <laughs> what, what in the world are you, where are you going with this? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> this is exactly what Paul is saying. Oh, I wish I was a hand. The hand gets to do everything. The hand gets to bring the food to the mouth and reply to emails and play the piano and play the instruments. And all I do is just carry all the weight. I do all the work down here. The hand gets all the attention. The hand gets rings. I think that somebody, uh, the person who invented toe rings for women, um, probably felt that way, you know? <laughs> hey. <laughs> The hand shouldn't be able to just be the only thing that gets rings, gold rings around it. So let's come up with toe rings. <laughs> but as Paul describes, uh, as we're going to see here later on in the chapter, it's the unseemly parts that can some way, in some ways become the most important. Never look down on somebody 
whom you deem as being unimportant as a part of the body of Christ. There, you need them. <laughs> I, I will say this, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I need you. If it weren't for you, I could not function in the area that God has called me to and gifted me to, if it weren't for you. We need each other. There's a balance. We need each other to carry the weight, sometimes to carry the burdens that we have. We can share those with others, and others can carry those and pray with us and balance us and help us. We're all dependent one upon the other. I want to close with a humorous story one commentator writes about this master tool convention. The story goes like this. Brother Hammer was appointed to preside over the master tool convention. Brother Screwdriver objected, saying, Brother Hammer, you're too noisy to preside over this meeting. You're always driving home your point, always nailing people. <laughs> I call for your resignation immediately. Brother Hammer responded, well, what about you, Brother Screwdriver? All you ever do is spin around in circles. Well, that may be true, said Brother Screwdriver, but at least I'm not like Brother Plain. His work is so surface, so shallow. What right does he even have to be here? Well, if you're going to kick me out, protested Brother Plain, <laughs> what about Brother Ruler? He thinks he's always right, measuring everyone else by his standard. Well, if you're going to come down on me, argued Brother Ruler, what about Brother Pliers? He needs to get a grip. <laughs> At least I don't rub people the wrong way, said Brother Pliers, staring at Brother Sandpaper. <laughs> Just then, the master craftsman walked in, and as he used each tool at the perfect time, he created an object of great beauty. And is that not true with us? We are his workmanship. And he is not finished, thank God. But let's not be like brother pliers or brother sandpaper and look down on someone else, some other tool in God's toolbox we call the body of Christ. And that's the point that Paul is driving home and nailing, no pun intended. Okay, pun intended. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I, I thank you so much for the Apostle Paul and his confronting of this issue that was taking place there in that Corinthian church. And Lord, I thank you for how apropos it is for us today. Lord, I thank you that we're all many parts of one body and that our role and our function are equally important. Lord, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.